Studies. And we really want to show you what we did, but we're hoping that it will stimulate your thinking on how you can use consumers, how you might think about panels differently, how you might think about going deeper with consumers than the ways that you're doing now. So whether or not you want an icon panel, which, you know, fantastic, we'd love to talk to you about that afterwards, but this, these are all things that you can incorporate into your own business. And before you click off the slide, I think the point that I wanted to make is that this panel really works with us throughout the whole process, through early innovation to optimization, almost to build out. The one caveat or watch out with any panel, at least for us, is don't use it for validation. It's about building and optimizing and learning and exploring. It's not about validation. So it doesn't take the place of the traditional research methods that you may be using today. Yeah, absolutely. Good, so let's talk about one. We're actually, I'm actually gonna share with you two case studies from phase one, and they're related so that you can see the scope of them. This is a case where we had a brand new category that we were trying to get into. Christine, um, you might just wanna mention why you're not branding it. Pardon? Well, yes, we are not branding, we're not branding any of this because we don't want, it's not out to market yet. Um, we don't want you to know what category it is. Um, and uh, we've even, Script, it's certainly not that. Um, so you'll, you, yeah, it's a brand new area and uh, look for it in 2013, 2014. Um, but we really needed to understand in a brand new area, what are we looking at here? How do we pick what part of the ocean we wanna go after? Um, there was a lot of category players out there already and we needed to find the specific place that Frito-Lay could, um, could work into. So we had some data, but we really didn't have understanding of the opportunity. What we needed was a landscape. We needed to understand the who was, was eating in this category, the why, where were they doing it? Were they doing it home or a, uh, away? Um, when were they doing it? What types of days, what types of occasions? So what we did is we put 150 of our icon panelists out there and any time they were eating something in this category, they took a picture of it on their, their mobile phone, um, on their camera, or uploaded it, and they filled out some questions about it. And we were able to categorize this category into six different landscape opportunities, if you will. So a little bit about the occasion, but also the emotions that were going along with it. Um, and really play with what fit best with Frito-Lay, what fits best with the consumer, and where do we think that we should go after? So that then when we went into ideation, we could target it a little bit more clearly rather than just ideating so broadly. And to build on that, you've got a little, you've got for the geeky people in the room, you had this massive visual landscape that it's, an, it's a huge exercise to code it. Um, PepsiCo has a proprietary framework that they use <clears throat> and we set it up to tie back to that, as well as capturing all the W's, who, what, when, why, where, and the competitive products that they're, they're eating and using. And all of that information is out there in this database for people to pull and leverage and use on a regular basis. It's, it's, it's uh, actually been hugely helpful for us, and we're picking up this methodology and developing it as we look at new categories going forward. Yeah, so it all needed to tie back strategically to those areas. <laughs> right. Good. So what that led us to then, once we had the areas that we wanted to go after, we wanted to go into some co-creation uh, sessions. And the opportunity here was we wanted to get some ideas out for 2013. So they needed to be somewhat technically feasible. So this was co-creation with some limits. And basically what we did is we took these uh, landscape areas, we asked the icon consumers to come up with benefits and insights for those areas, both functional benefits, emotional uh, benefits, and insights to really help us understand what was driving it within that category from a consumer perspective. And then we added in actual food that we had some prototypes of and had them tie those all together and see how we could build concepts. The goal for this was to come out with solid concepts that were grounded in this landscape that had consumer, real <coughs> consumer benefits uh, and that we felt were compelling to go out into the market and, and test through bases. 
So we did uh, end up with six concepts um, that we've got, we had several of them, um, they went through, went into quantitative after this. Okay, so that's kind of phase one, the insights to ideas. So phase two, this is really about the building out ideas. We've got a basic idea, what do we do with it now? So this is one, another example. One of the things that ideas to go is very good at is concept writing. We, we, we build good concepts, we believe, and Pat seems nice to, right to seems to agree. What's that? It's a nice ringtone. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I, I almost wanted to dance. Um, so what we did is we created something called concept labs, where they had a whole bunch of raw ideas, and we took the team through a very intensive process to build out these ideas into concepts that were ready to go into bases, which is what they use. So we brought all the players to the table. We brought the marketing people. We brought the insights people. We brought culinary to help us describe the food in a really delicious way. We brought the people who were responsible for the visuals so that they could hear it and because we know how important that visual is. We brought a professional concept writer in and then we facilitated the sessions to make sure that we had really strong benefits, that we had everything that we needed. We wrote first drafts of the concepts and then put them in front of the icon consumers not to validate them again, but to optimize them. And they came up with fabulous language because as great as we are, I'm not an 18-year-old boy who eats Doritos. And sometimes the, that, them giving us the language of this is how I would say it or this is how it would relate to me is so much better to make that concept stronger. So we had um, six brands that we did. We're going to have over probably about 75 concepts that are ready going through this very intensive process. And let me just build on this really quickly. This is about executional excellence, and it's an opportunity for us. And the reality is um, we do this in a very short window of time. So in roughly two months, we're going through ideation and then optimizing ideas and getting them ready for basic testing. And that's not a lot of time to actually build and work ideas. So uh, we like to do it fast and furious at Credo, and this is an example of trying to get fast and furious right. This was an online package uh, project. Basically, we had a brand new package. We wanted to see how consumers used it, what was good, what wasn't. But it was targeted to the family. So instead of bringing people in and showing them how it worked and seeing what they thought, we sent it out to them, had them videotape them and their families interacting with it. And we were able to learn significantly more by see, watching them do it online than we ever would have if they came in. Um, and then they could also articulate the benefits. We could see the challenges. And we were able to give right back to R&D some real big issues that they could correct, as well as optimizing the package and being able to say, this is why consumers really love it, besides the fact that it's cool. You know, we really had some, some strong consumer uh, standpoint. The new CEO started about a year ago, his name's Tom Greco. And he brought in his leadership team and he wanted to basically show them his vision and his strategy. He approached the insights team and said, hey, can you do some kind of consumer immersion with them? So we came up with this, uh, we coined this term called Shop Life New. And the idea was to drive some consumer empathy with our executives. What happened was they did a short profile of a consumer, I'll call her Sarah, just three to four minutes, she videos herself, um, in a certain, anchored in a situation I talked to you about the proprietary segment we had. So assume that Sarah's child is coming home and she's sharing a snack with them. And then we said, we showed this video, we put it on an iPad and gave it to the executives, I'm sure small groups, we broke them into five or six. They saw the video and they were given a charter and some money and said, go shop for Sarah and her daughter and come back in a couple hours. And when they came back, lo and behold, Sarah, who they'd seen on the iPad, was sitting in the chair and she had her bag of groceries with her. And so they sat down and they had an exchange and a conversation about, hey, what did you buy? Why did you buy that? Oh, let me show you what I bought. What do you think? Yeah, maybe not. Um, so it was great. It was great learning. Um, what was really helpful was a debrief afterwards, and I'll give you two quick facts and takeaways. One was, oh my gosh, I can't believe that they have to buy on this small of a budget. I couldn't do it. I had to buy private label something because I couldn't buy what I wanted to. And then you have executives in the room, and by the way, I had a lot of finance guys in my room. And they're like, I'm looking at all these tables, there were 10. And I don't see a lot of PepsiCo and Frito-Lay products, and I'm concerned. I heard about this exercise for two months, 
and we repeated it three times. I don't think it would have been as successful if we hadn't had these articulate, engaged consumers that we had from the panel there. Um, and so that's our consumer empathy exercise. Thank you.